Hello and welcome to Church at Home with Holy Trinity Church in Nailsy. Of course, today is Remembrance Sunday, but it doesn't look or feel quite like it usually does. And of course, that's because of lockdown. I know, here we go again, our second national lockdown. And it's affected every area of our lives, and I'm afraid that includes church. So sadly, we've had to suspend all our church services in the building. However, the good news is that we can still hold private prayer in the church building. So that means on Wednesdays and Sundays between 11 and 12.30, you're welcome to come down and just spend some time in quiet personal prayer. We've made the building as COVID safe as we can and uh, we'd love you to take advantage of that if you would like. And there's some other good news as well. Um, some great news for Kirsty Benson, who uh, was due to marry Daniel uh, this week on Thursday. Of course, that was the first day of lockdown, which was a little bit awkward. But with a little bit of rearrangement, the wedding went ahead on Monday. So yes, it was a bit of a rush, but very exciting and a very happy occasion for Kirsty and Daniel. So our huge congratulations to them and every blessing for their future marriage. Well, today is all about remembering. Usually we'd be gathering outside the church at the War Memorial. We'd be seeing the band play and hearing the bugler and joining together for the two minute silence and the church service with the uniformed organizations after that. Well, of course, none of that will be happening today in the way that it usually does. And so it is different, but we can, and I think we should, still remember. And that is the theme of Church at Home for us today. In a short while, Robin is going to help us think about what remembering might mean for Christians. And then we'll be thinking more about remembering in our Church at Home together. But to begin with, we've got a video here from the Royal British Legion that they've put together to help us think about remembering. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow. Between the crosses, row on row that mark our place and in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly scarce heard among the guns below we are the dead short days ago we lived felt dawn saw sunset glow loved and were loved and now we lie in Flanders fields take up our quarrel with the foe to you from failing hands we throw the torch be yours to hold it high if ye break faith with us who die we shall not sleep though poppies grow in Flanders fields.
Today's reading is taken from St Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 35 to 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Remembrance Day, obviously very different this year. But as we continue through with our church at home today, we'll be thinking not only about remembrance, but also about reassurance. And now that I'm back from church, I can take my uniform off. Two phrases taken from that Bible reading that we had earlier. We are facing death all day long and nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. I was born during the Second World War and so obviously I have no recollection of anybody who actually died in that conflict. My father was a railwayman. He had a very high position. For part of the war he was stationed on top of Manchester Exchange Railway Station acting as fire watch duty um, during the Blitz. But it's in the subsequent years that I've learned the stories of some of those who have suffered bereavements, either as members of their family or of other colleagues. But in my teenage years, and perhaps a bit beyond, remembrance itself seemed a bit hollow. After all, how could I remember people I'd never known? How could I remember in an experience that I'd never shared. I could recognise what others had done. I could appreciate what others had done. There could be a sense of gratitude. All of that being part of a network of the whole history that I've been born into and so many other circumstances too. A little very like these days, we're still forming the experiences for other people and not just youngsters. Even the church, by its witness, is forming the experience of others for good or for ill. But we face death all day long. That has now an extra dimension through the onset of the coronavirus. For others, the virus is coming on top of the hardship, the persecution, the famine, and everything else referred to in the scriptures. So where does remembering fit in? Especially when we're taken up so much with the present and the immediate future. What actually is remembering? There's obviously the, the trivial side of it. Remembering where I left the car keys, trying to remember which wheelie bin we have to put out this week. But then goes a bit deeper when it's making something of a day or an event, a birthday, an anniversary. During this time of the virus, there's been an extra difficulty because when there has been a death and a funeral with only a limited number of people being able to come to the funeral service, there has been talk about having a memorial service, a remembering service subsequently but even the possibilities of those have been deferred time and time again. And such an occasion as a remembering service 
is a bit more than just saying, oh yes, that happened, but to try and give thanks, to recognise the, the pain that somebody has gone through and is still going through, expressing some solidarity with them. Even in normal times, if we can remember what normal times were like, often enough I've found people who would say that, oh, well, a few weeks after somebody's death, that they didn't like to talk about it anymore in case it upset the person who'd been bereaved, forgetting that they would be thinking about that person all the time anyway. The present reality being much more than just a memory the consequences of the death being real, here and now. Because remembering has this idea of it, of making something real. When I was filming that short bit outside the church with the Holy Trinity Memorial, there had been somebody just sitting on the wall round the corner who, after I'd finished the recording, he was coming past, walking his dog, and paused to point out that the name of someone in his family was on that memorial, and that was a continual reminder to him. Just like in the Old Testament, there were occasions when, during the progress of the children of Israel, when there had been a significant event in some place, they would raise a pile of stones there to act as the continuing reminder so that future generations would say, what do these stones mean? And it could bring it back into the present for them. Because this leads to a fuller idea of what is meant by re-membering. A body is made up of many members, and they are decidedly real. So here is the hint that to re Remember something is much more than recalling, recollecting, reflecting, which are just mental activities. It's actually giving substance to something again and again. Insofar as we can, it involves heart and soul and, and actions if they are appropriate at all. Perhaps every week or every month, or every year, to remember is to give substance to something afresh. There's so much in the Gospels, and that's a bit of an understatement, so much in the Gospels about the things which Jesus taught and did. Things like the stilling of the storm, feeding of the 5,000, raising the dead. He said to his disciples that the Holy Spirit would remind them of the things which he'd been telling them. But there's only one thing of which he said to them, do this in remembrance of me. And that was, of course, in what we would now call the Holy Communion service, which was to become a tangible token, the reality of his presence with us. That reminder, the remembering of the sacrifice and the hope, making real the promise that I am with you. When the first lockdown ended we were able to resume the services of Holy Communion in the church but that was only briefly and now they've been stopped again and it's that's the case now watch this space for further development. But what is the basis of our reassurance. It's not the things which we might make up for ourselves, but on the reassurance that God gives to us. And our hope, our security, are based on God remembering. Now there's no danger, no chance of God forgetting. That's why that phrase to forgive and to forget is not only unhelpful, it's actually completely unbiblical. Because forgetting is always a weakness of one kind or another. Although in some of our 
human experiences, forgetting can be quite a blessing as well. But know that as far as our sinfulness has been concerned, when God has forgiven, he doesn't forget. He chooses not to remember, not to give any substance to it anymore, not to dwell on it, which is an object lesson for us as well. But what God does do is to give substance to his promise. The promise is, in fact, promises such as, I am with you. I love you. He remembers them and gives them solidity, substance, reality. The virus, in addition to all the other conflicts that might be being remembered today, serves to remind us of the sheer human fragility and vulnerability that we have. Whereas on the other hand, God and the love of God are eternal. That which we call space and time is only just a small subsection of the height and depth of creation. That which God has created and is humming and alive with his presence, his light, his love. But, wonder of wonders, at one point in space and in time, he chose to embody that love into our spoilt part of creation. That time in which the word was made flesh, flesh and blood, coming into a world of hardship, to suffer in it, to die in it, and then to be raised from it. Therefore, neither death nor life, nor anything else in all creation, can separate us from the love of God. Our present circumstances are an odd mixture because for some it's a whole range, a whole raft of uncertainties. For others, sadly, there are already certainties which have come about and which are very unwelcome. But the certainties and the uncertainties can all be wrapped up together. And against and over above those, we have those words like Paul is saying, that I am convinced that nothing can separate us from that love of God. And so, a question for us all to think over. Am I realising the security I have in the love of God? Reflecting the words of one of the hymns which is often sung at times like these. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, for all of them. Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice.
And now for our time of prayer. Today is Remembrance Sunday, so we start by praying about that. Then we will pray for our country and our local community. And following that, for those who are particularly vulnerable at this time, and for those who are ill or bereaved. So let us pray. Loving Father, we remember before you this morning with gratitude those people who gave their lives in two world wars and in countless conflicts since, that they died for the benefit of us and their names for those who come from Nailsea being inscribed at the memorials at Holy Trinity and Christ Church. We remember their heroism and their suffering. As we remember them, we also pray for those men and women serving our country now. We pray for peace and for their safety. We also bring before you, Lord, those people who live with scars of conflict, often life-changing, and for their families, and we pray for healing. We pray for the British Legion, the Royal British Legion, and other charities who support our forces and their families. We give thanks to for all those who so skillfully help to improve the quality of their lives. We give thanks that skills of our forces are being used in peace to help our country at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, we find ourselves in a time of continuing uncertainty. The advice of experts often seems contradictory. Lord, we pray for those making key decisions on our lives, that they may have wisdom and listen to your guiding word. We pray for our community here in Nelsey and for all those on whom our safety and health depends. We pray that as a community we will continue to help one another as we have done so well during the current problems. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray now for those who are particularly vulnerable at this time, for those needing treatment for other medical problems, for the elderly and their carers, for the young who are unwell, for those with financial difficulties, for those out of work, and for those who cannot see where their future will lie. We pray for those people that we know who are ill or, or who are bereaved. And in a moment of silence, we can all bring before God the names of those we know who particularly need our prayers at this time. For the sick, we pray for healing. And for the bereaved, we pray for comfort and peace of mind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we bring our prayers together as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
for those of you who are watching this on Sunday morning, it won't be long now until 11 o'clock when we traditionally observe two minutes silence. Hopefully you will have heard of the encouragement there is for us all to stand by our doors and observe the two minutes silence there, a bit like we did with the clap for carers, so that we can feel that we're doing it in community with other people. I hope that you might take that opportunity to do just that. Um, here's another video from the Royal British Legion that they have produced explaining why they think it's important that we observe the two minute silence each year. Let's break the silence on the two minute silence and pause. You see, it's not about which side of the argument you side with. Think of it as an act of kindness. You may not know their names. You may never meet them face to face. But imagine what it must feel like to never again see the face of your brother or your best mate. Imagine all you had left was the pictures they left on Facebook or a backpack full of their old school books. This is more than some war in your history textbook. You don't have to agree with the politicians. You don't have to like their decisions, but you can decide to empathize. And yeah, it can be awkward just standing there, but try this. Try closing your eyes. Remember those who risk their lives knowing every second might be their last. So if we give them a second or two minutes, is that really too much to ask? Let that football roll to a stop. Let your conversation reach a full stop. Mute your phone, close the laptop, pause your coffee, switch off the telly. Because when it comes to empathy, we can all stand at the front line. And on 11-11, we can all choose to unite. We need to talk about the silence and then pause. Lest we forget, this moment is ours. Church at Home is now drawing to a close, but let's pause for a prayer on this Remembrance Sunday. Most Holy God and Father, Hear our prayers for all who strive for peace and all who fight for justice. Help us who today remember the cost of war to work for a better tomorrow. And as we commend to you lives lost in terror and conflict, bring us all in the end to the peace of your presence through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the blessings that flow from the throne of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be known to you today and every day. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us this week for Church at Home. Please do dwell on the love of God this week and remember just how secure you are within that love. And do join us next week for Church at Home, when we're going to explore that wonderful psalm, Psalm 23, and see the comfort and the encouragement that it brings to us, even in dark times. Bye for now. God bless.
Jesus.